everyone, and welcome back to Empire Total War 2 with this Polish-Lithuanian campaign. Last time around, we defeated, thoroughly defeated the Prussians. However, they are now back. I decided not to try and hold on to either Saxony nor Berlin, or I should say Brandenburg or Saxony, or I should say Dresden or Berlin. I decided not to hold on to any of them. They rebelled, and because they had no armies, it was pretty easy to set up a peace deal with both of them and a trade deal. In terms of the Saxons, we have historic agreement, so that gave me like 82 plus. So even though we were technically at war because of the rebellion, uh, we're pr on pretty good terms with the electorate of Saxony. That cannot really be said about the Prussians, though. But at this point, the Prussian state is not a is not a lot. They have managed to rebuild or like repair most of the stuff, but otherwise, it's going to take a while for them to come back in any kind of fashion. However, as I was thinking or speculating at the end of last episode. I was thinking, you know what, now would be a pretty good time for the Austrians to strike me back. And so they have. You notice the red border, I think you noticed from the start. The Austrians are at war with us again. So, um, I think it was a turn ago that the Austrians declared war on me. I should say it's 1713. I can't remember. I didn't do that many turns, but maybe a year passed uh, in terms of turns. So that's what's going on. I had moved the two armies out, so we've split them. I've tried to organize them a little bit more in terms of like organizing them to kind of a standardized army for both of them, since they're split. So both of them have two units of light infantry, three units of wing to sars, two units of the lighter guard cavalry, two cannons. I'm hoping to increase that. I am currently trying to update my cannon uh, inventory, you might say, uh, to the 18 pounders that uh, we can actually... Wait, these are... Gar oh, they're fixed artillery as well! Which one is not fixed? I thought for sure the 18 pounders weren't fixed. Garrison artillery. They're all fixed artillery. What's the point of bringing them? Notice this cannon, though. This 64-pound garrison carronade. Doesn't have a picture there. But 16-pound cannon. It has a shit range. But imagine if you were able to put... If anyone comes in front of that cannon. Placed with canister or round shot. That's devastating. I guess this one, six pounders, is the only one that's currently like movable. Unfortunately, that well, that actually is pretty good because it frees up money. But I don't really have anything to spend it on. Currently, the Swedes aren't moving. As far as I've seen, the Russians aren't moving in. And you know, it's not great that the Swedes are holding on to it. But even as they're holding on to it. Uh, the increase of Western Slav comes roughly at the same as the um, Scandinavians. I don't know why the Scandinavians are increasing that high. For my increase, in terms of most of my provinces, uh, where I don't have the, um, uh, the schools... Do I, is there any province that I don't have a school in? I don't have one here. It increases by 0.8. For the Swedes, they they have a school that promotes Polish or Western Slavic, but yet they still get 1.3. Damn. Swedish culture, they say bloody IKEA and ABBA and all of that, apparently, really goes down well with the Baltics. Um, anyways, so that that's for those armies and the Swedes and all of that. Um, currently, what I'm looking at right here is we've got Potopki. I noticed though he's really old so I should probably start looking to replace him since it takes quite a while to recruit a general. We should probably look at replacing him. He's 83 years old. 
is a great general, but at 83, poor bastard probably can't even get on a horse. Um, in terms of the Austrian army, now they've got a strong army in Prague, and then they've got this army right here moving in, possibly to deal with us in Hungary. But at the same time, we also have a strong Ottoman force coming in. They're sitting right here on the bridge, uh, ready to march against us as well. And um, I'm a little bit... I'm wondering here what I should do. Um, this is a pretty strong army. But I don't know if it's that strong that we can take on possibly an Austrian attack first. Followed by an Ottoman attack. And they've got that big organ gun. And eh, that's a that's a pretty nasty volley gun. And currently, all of these forces are nowhere near near the capacity of moving in on the enemy. Also, we're actually just about to reinforce a lot of these. They still lack full numbers. Uh, so we got that. I was about to say going for us, but not going for us. But I think with that, everyone's kind of set up so we I don't just end the turn and we everyone wondering why is there a fight here and there. Um, but we'll end turn, we'll see if anyone or who, who attacks first or if anyone attacks. And then we'll go from there. I'm hoping that I can piece out the Austrians pretty quickly. What I'm thinking when we piece out the Austrians is that we actually take control of Prague and we keep that uh, rather than try and give that back to the Austrians. So we we hold on to that as we go as going forward. Uh, the bad part about it in terms of like logistics that I noticed is of course that the road system doesn't actually lead to Silesia. There's no road that goes to Silesia and Vesla. Um The roads head to Dresden or they head down to Vienna. So we'll, we have the gap here to march through. But obviously marching along the road is a lot better. But enough talking though. We need to, um, we need to advance our troops and we need to get to the bottom of uh, these um, conundrums that we are presented with. And with that, let's go ahead and end turn. The enemy does not attack, however, my trade routes are being um, attacked by a Swedish fleet off the coast of Africa? Of all the places. But I should consider myself lucky then, because if it had been here, a lot more trade would have been disrupted. Armchair General for military technologies, that's good. Path blocked. City under siege. It's the Ottomans that are sieging us. Uh, winged Hussars being recruited over here. Yes, I decided, you know what? These armies have Hussars. Then this one should as well. Um, construction. We constructed uh, farmland in Hungary. Nation destroyed the Cherokee. Wait, who destroys the Cherokee? Not that it's super important to whatever's going on with us. Alright, there was a combined effort of the British and the Spanish to get rid of them. Let's go back here. Someone noted in an earlier episode here, why does Prussia own a bit of uh, North Africa? Well, they don't any longer. Uh, but currently Russia owns Tripoli or Libya today. And then we've got the British owning Algiers and Tunis. Um, no, the thing is, oftentimes, because the AI, as someone pointed out as well, the sort of the diplomatic system in Empire is like the it's screwed. Uh, you always like in the first few turns, you always get these god awful trade agreement or like. Um, diplomatic promo promo promotions like if you play Sweden Britain will ask to trade Finland for Jamaica 
or some like super crazy stuff like that. Um, and so, uh, so the AI, when they deal with each other, they usually agree to those kind of weird things. I know that in the past that in one playthrough, I think I played as the Americans, or maybe I played as the British, that I think it was Savannah, Georgia, that was somehow traded to the uh, Mughal Empire, and then the Mughal Empire started sort of expanding into native territory. Which was an interesting twist, to be sure. Um, now, I could definitely march to the defense of this, which could be uh, very useful. Or, I could take on this stack right here, which I think would bring the Austrians to their knees. The thing is, the Austrians are advancing. I need to get... Oh, finally! I can build the new barracks. That's great. And lucky for me, I saved up so much money. So now we can build them. Um, build them here as well. We build them everywhere. Or wherever we can. We're, now we're building the barracks all over the place. So we can get the line infantry units, or proper line infantry, so we really pass on from the 1600s, and we're definitely into the 1700s. As they're not fully replenished, these two armies, I think we'll wait a little bit more, and I might have... No, I don't think all units are now recruited, so these armies, these two armies are set. They will be going after this town right here. We'll set the troops on the border, ready to cross. Um, we don't want to sit here being sieged in by the Ottomans, so we're going to sally forth and deal with them. The organ gun, definitely a nasty piece of work. But I have three batteries of my own. Oh, the range of this is only 400. That um, that helps a lot. And it also makes sense. I mean, the, the gun's crazy. Anyways, let's go ahead and break this siege. This is kind of good, because if I'm able to break this Ottoman army down without too many casualties, I could actually bring these guys over and take Vienna. And we might be able to um, get peace with the Austrians, like, really quickly. Um, because I really want to go after the Ottomans before they're able to fill out, um, get more troops into their European part of their empire. So I can really push them all the way to the capital. Um, and Because it's so much territory that's uh, sort of unguarded right now, and I really want to push into that. And I don't want to deal with all this other bullshit. And now I'm thinking about going down here, I forgot about the Swedes again. Bloody Swedes. Anyways, let's go ahead and deal with these Ottomans before we do anything else. So, without further ado, let's uh, march out and sally forth and break this siege. The Ottomans deploy quite far back and out of artillery range. Yet again, over and over in these battles, I struggle to find a good position for the artillery so I can blast the enemy. But they're always on the back side of a slope, or my cannons are on the back side of the slope, can't fire forward. Um, before we go in, I just kind of want to show where the different uh, units are. So we've got the three Grenadiers over on the right. Um, then the second unit over here, here Tunai. And let's see... Gios over here, kind of in the middle. Followed by Kurt also in the middle, followed by Chipilu. And that's about it for them. I don't think there is any more... Um, name unit in this army. The cannon, yes. One of the cannons. So it's the middle one. That is the uh, 
name unit. With that, let's go ahead and start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and deploy the unit that spawn as part of the defense. And these engineers. Now, we've been sitting in place in this town for quite a while. And they were able to deploy no bombs, no spikes, nothing. So, the engineers is a waste of time. So they're going to be sent in to die. I'm not going to be worried about them at all. Um, in terms of what the Ottomans got... Ooh, all the cavalry is coming this way. A perfect target, since this is uh, probably one of the few places where my cannons could possibly hit them. So the fact that they're sending all the cavalry, I have cavalry on this side. And then, overall, their position is... I mean, they're on the back side, so they're a bit protected. But the position isn't that great. Like, there's a lot of impossible terrain. And I feel like if I, if I get the upper hand, I can take this, and then I'll be firing down upon the enemy. Um, so we got these kind of just to not really g kill themselves but almost and then we're gonna have the two infantry brigades and I think we'll have we put the grenadiers in reserve or second and then we got the light cavalry I think we'll switch position of the cavalry the carbineers will be heading to this side and then the light cavalry And the Hazar unit will be heading to this because I kind of want to go... What it looks like is the enemy is deploying more towards this side than they are to this side. And so I can hold here but I, I can kind of sweep the cavalry down here. And I can keep the carbineers moving up firing through the flank as we move on all of these. Have we hit any of these? We've hit them a little bit. Some of the cannon shots kind of reach. But not really. Um, it is a difficult shot given the position here. If we take a closer look. Yeah, we can kind of see them. But yeah, it's a difficult shot. It's going to take a while for the troops to get into position. So I think we'll cut... To the point where we are ready to make our attack. I've sent forwards the engineers. They can't form square. So I've moved them into these thicker formations to withstand cavalry. As I'm hoping to goat the cavalry into attacking them. Looks like the Ottomans are sailing forth with a large part of their army. We're going to get the other two units here. These two can form square, though. Okay, so we got some Mamluks actually coming out of position. Let's go ahead and uh, start to kind of set up position. We're bouncing shots through our own lines here. Um, the garrison infantry, both units of garrison troops got attacked by the enemy cavalry. Even in square, the Mamluks actually took a hundred men out of this unit. The enemy did not have this a similar success taking on the other square. They're uh, overrunning some of the engineers. They're attacking from all sides. Luckily though, these are the troops that I want to lose. Um, Okay, I'm, I'm cutting up a lot of my own units here in the back. Lord of the cannons to hold fire for now. Uh, they're bringing in all of them. My uh, Valachian troops, Valachian light cavalry, should probably turn around. I was going to send them all the way up around there. That doesn't seem like that's any point now. The Wing Hussar is going to be brought up there. And now we can bring up the Carbiniers as well to have them join the fight. Grenadiers 
move closer to the line. We've got one of the engineers breaking soon enough. I'm sure we're going to have two, three. And the squares here. A lot of the Ottomans are just rushing on to the squares. Do I have... I think I have a better chance, maybe. If I fire my cannons this way. This small archer unit's probably not worth stopping to shoot at. Instead, we'll go ahead and attack through the back of that one. And here we got similar um, peasant rabble and more archers. We've got the lines of infantry backed up by grenadiers ready to hold off the enemy's charges. Uh, they're actually pulling back to go after the carbineers. The carbineers will pull off. As long as we can hold the enemy out here in front and we can shoot at them, then, then it doesn't matter um, how many of... Uh, Oh, we got, we got all of those rather quickly as well. Hand mortars. Don't like the sound of that. I don't like the sound of the... Uh, the camels. They have some troops setting up to actually fire him back at us. But overall, I'd say the... Uh, Oh, the Bosniaks have come after us. Looks like one Carbonier unit's decided to leave. Alright, the Wallachians running down the hand mortar group as well. And the line is holding fine against the uh, rest of the enemy here. We got lots of the enemy's uh, units running away. The hand mortar unit was destroyed. I'll have the Valakians just keep running down the retreating troops. Uh, keep them occupied so they don't put the Ottomans on spikes. Oh, the square! The square is being blown to pieces by hand mortars. A lot of the cannons to focus their fire on that. Heavy losses for this infantry. Luckily for me, it's not a name regiment. So I don't have to worry about it that much. We'll have the Wallachians just running back and forth through here. Oh, they've got... Uh, they're rallying some troops back here. We'll go after them. There's no point in holding the square any longer. The square can try and march what's here. I want to just open up. Ooh, Jippy Lou took a face full of hand mortar shots. Let's not have them continue, so I'm calling in the winged hussars there. And, ah, the uh, carbineers did their part. I guess the hand mortars realized that the hussars were on the way. Let's have 1st Brigade advance as the winged hussars go in, striking the mortar group. Carbineers doing another attack from over here. Oh, oh one of the Vala cavalry units was sent away. The hand mortar was sent away. Let's try not to shoot our own. Fire for the Mamluks. We can have three of the units moving on what's rest here. And then two bringing up the flank. Let's continue following after the enemy. With the winged hussars. Okay, so they'll break rather quickly. I think most of the uh, enemy army stands to break here. 
So I'll order an advance all across the line. We'll order the cannons to hold fire. Wing the SARS continue through. Yeah, look at that. They're all running now. And the cavalry is running them all down. What we just need to do now is uh, finish them off. Luckily for me, I placed a stupid gun all the way here. If I time it right, I should be able to hit it while they're uh, firing their cannons wildly in the wrong direction. And uh, I should be able to deal with um, these hillmen that are left. But with that, I definitely just go ahead and call this a victory. As the enemy don't have troops anymore to uh, withstand their onslaught. They're all basically gone at this point. So I will call this a victory. Here's the result of the battle. We deployed about equal troops. The enemy, however, lost everything but 600 men. So they were only left with, what, 10% of their ori original force. Uh, we lost 1600 or 1700, which is quite a lot. But then again, you have to remember that I specifically set out to, like, kill off three, five units, actually. Um, Highest kills goes to the cavalry, no surprise, and actually one of the cannons, that's a little bit more of a surprise. Or I guess not that much when you see the drop off from the cavalry units and what the infantry is sort of done. Then it's no surprise anymore, since the cavalry gets in between almost 900 kills and 500, and then there's a drop down to 200 for the 
cannon. Or in terms of range, anyways. Uh, so, large part of the army is still intact. Can't be said for the same for the Ottomans. Now with that, let's see. It still will cost me about 5,000 to replenish. But if I don't include the engineers, it falls down to about 386. Um, which seems more agreeable. Now, Vienna lies open, and that could be an interesting battle, but I'm more interested in striking one of the larger forces so that we can bring down the um, Austrians. So currently, their power is mighty, ours is strong. So we're not yet ready to go ahead and sign peace. Well, there, that is to be expected since we haven't even crossed swords in this war as of yet. I do have two hussars ready to come in here. I think we might even have a third on the way. So we'll have three hussars come in and join this force. We'll make it a lot more powerful. And meeting this force out in the open, I can definitely see it getting crushed, similarly to what we did to the Ottoman force. But for now, let's go ahead and end turn and see where the enemy moves their troops. The Prussians are really keen on gaining the Silesian region. They offer indefinite military access and they offer up two technologies. Um, I don't know why the AI thinks military access is such a great idea. What if I offer technology? So they w wanted to give me the spinning jenny and utilitarianism. Um, construction for cultural building. I don't know if that's super useful. And the only thing I could give them is military. Which seems all not good to give the Prussians military. No, you know what? Um, no deal. Well, that's how far I've got. Um, it looks like it's time for the second round of sieges. As this time it's the Austrians laying siege to the exactly same area. Um... The Hussars don't really reach. Oh, they do kind of reach. The second one doesn't. That means that I maybe... Oh, this army is too big. I'll merge the um, engineers. I'm not that interested in them anyways. Why did I get Pike this time around? Maybe they... Uh, well, why did I get Pike this time? Well, because last time... Anyone, the, the people of the town that volunteered to fight, got specifically sent in first as cannon fodder. Um, so yeah, that's probably why. Uh, anything else that happened? No, nothing important. Let's go ahead then and break free for a second time. Um, as we lost a few troops... We're down to 5,500 men. The Austrians bring 6,500. Um, they do have some more modern flintlock troops. Less cavalry than the Ottomans. Let's hope that's an advantage for me. Uh, the big thing that is though is their army has seen barely any actions. There's only two units with chevrons. While there's loads of mine with five and above. So I'd say that's uh, reason enough to expect victory. The battle is underway. As we can see the enemy has sent in their cavalry first. As they usually do. But the Austrian force is a rather active one. And so there's an active advance throughout their entire battle line to come down and face us. So I've decided 
to hold my position on the hill here and uh, let the enemy come to me the um, main reason why really why I'm not advancing on them is because they have a clear advantage in cavalry it wasn't too clear to start off with but when I actually saw all their cavalry advancing oh they dismounted their troops the dragoons have dismounted The cuirassiers have not, though. Which makes sense. Oh, the, um... The Hussars make another attempt. And right straight into the Pike Square. Brilliant strategy. Not entirely sure who's in charge of the Austrians. But, uh, they should hire him for more of these, uh... Excursions. There's two enemy cavalry unit moving on a far flank. Probably looking to attack the regiment over here. I'm gonna draw up my dragoons along the road. We're gonna bring up the Huzhas in response. Now I should say this is the second time I'm playing this battle because the first time it crashed. The perf the but the the main thing about the always um, makes me dislike the crashes is when you go back in and try and redo the battle the weather always turns to shit it was perfect weather super beautiful the colors would have of the battle would have popped and it would have looked wonderful and now we get fog at least it's not heavy rain so I guess I can't complain too much um. So, my troops that I sent forwards in kind of an attempt to get them killed, but also to drag all the Austrian troops to them, um, they're actually holding on pretty well. Okay, now the troops are coming in. These guys have been, I think they've been running for so long, they're probably quite an easy target to attack. Okay, we shot about just as many of our own as the enemy. Will we get a chance to fire once more? I don't think so. Oh, we did. That plus the Hussars charge probably brings down their flank. Oh yeah, the light troops. They ran all that way. Just to get slaughtered. Yeah, the Hussars easily won that fight. Bad time all around for the enemy. Pursuing that will actually be quite difficult. Well, I have the uh, my cavalry pursue most of them. Let's make sure those guys don't come back. The engineer team is rallying. Keep the Austrians off me. Looks like the Pike Square has finally given up. I'm gonna order cannon shot into that area. All right, the Grenadiers are about to come in contact with the enemy Grenadiers. I think we've pursued those guys enough. And especially over here. That's way, way too much. We almost ran straight into the Cobra Grenadiers. Now the thing is, I'd probably rather have had the um, Austrian line meet us in this end first. Because then I could roll it up with my cavalry. Now it comes through the other way. They're lining up to fire at us. And we do not have the range. So my grenadiers will advance. 
put themselves within range. And I think we will do the same with the line infantry. They will also advance to get within range. Oh, the Croatian Dragoons came back. Firefight has started on this side. We do have the high ground. Should f count for something, shouldn't it? Gotta keep an eye on where my guns are firing so that I don't fire on my own troops. Good amount of fire, but only four people has fallen on the troops down there. We've lost significantly a lot more troops. Let's see. Oh, they've dismounted. Go after them. I think what I want to do is I want to take these two and see if I can strike at the enemy over here because the, my um, Grenadiers won't win that fight on their own. And then I just want to see if I can get the Austrians to commit all their forces into a fight. And then once they're committed and held in place. That is the time when we are um, ready to send in the cavalry. Let's see, there's a unit that's rallied in the middle of all of this. The irregular engineer team. Move forward and take the brunt of the assaults. Carbineers was su successful in dealing with this. They should organize themselves here with the winged hussars. The in invalid regiment setting up over here. Let's see, the Grenadiers is going pretty okay, I would say. Although this one's lost about 100 men, while these guys have lost about 20. Plus they've got two extra regiments being brought up. And we've got a lot of casualties over here as well. I'm gonna open up a little bit. So the cavalry can come through. This is... Um, definitely weaker cavalry though. Not really meant for frontal charges. But I need something to win this, uh, this fight over on this flank. So as the cavalry fights, I will order uh, the um, Grenadiers forward into an attack. Take control of the woods. Fight from there. Uh, prolonged fighting here is probably not going to be good for us, so I'm going to tell the cavalry to push through. Cannons currently firing down right through here, which seems to be working out for now, getting good bounces through there. From this range you should be able to actually get a few kills, wouldn't you? Let's have the cavalry right around and disturb more of their line. Make a straight line over here. Let's have the cavalry push straight through. Austrian pikes. Carbineers run through. And then the winged assaults will strike at the Coburg regiment. The Carabiniers made it through the enemy lines. My Grenadiers advanced to new positions. 
which has worked out for them. Engineering team holding on. Let's aid in this fight here, actually. And let's do it with all the cavalry. So we'll bring in the other two carbineers as well to aid in the struggle on this side. And then from this side, we'll be rolling up the enemy. Okay, oh, there's... Um, they're all concentrating right now. Let's see. Focusing cannon fire over there. They're getting cl really close here. Okay, the cavalry has been successful in their attacks. Let's see if you can't break this regiment as well. We can start seeing if we can't roll up the entire flank from this side. Continue on into the 23rd. And then the infantry will start to follow into that. Um, cannons. Bouncing in the back. Alright. We broke this regiment as well. Good. Cavalry is going in. Our regiment is holding on though. Which might not be that much of a surprise, seeing as though um, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of my cavalry is getting tired at this point. I think the important bit is to get the cavalry, keep the cavalry moving. And as they're moving, I will wheel up the sides to slowly envelop the enemy side. Here could be a Im very important development. The general has decided to put himself straight in front of the Grenadier Regiment. See if you can't shoot him. It would definitely change the outcome of the battle. I think he's... Uh, Oh, all my cavalry seem to have been broke there. The pikemen are actually breaking. Even my hussars. I guess I completely f neglected to check what was going on there. Sending the Valachians to take care of the those pikes. But my infantry is holding. Order the cannons to focus in on the square. We're getting flanked over here. The thing is, the enemy is on such low numbers at this point. I feel like... I've been feeling that I should probably... Like, use... Bayonet charges... More often. Oh, the wing dissars go in on their own. Cannons, it's time to hold fire. These grenadiers, Holtz grenadiers, uh, took a lot of damage move getting up to the enemy line. But once they got there, they uh, quickly sent the Austrians packing and uh, I think we can see a similar result throughout the battlefield. Uh, one thing here, we still have like the plug bayonets so that could have been a thing to um, go on ahead and actually fix the plug bayonets. Oh, it looks like they're all running now. I'll order a general advance of the infantry. And then we'll set targets for the cavalry to chase the enemy down. And with that, the battle is won. The Austrians have been beaten on the same ground 
as the Ottomans. We are victorious. And here's the result of the battle. We deployed about equal troops. That's about 600 men difference between our forces. However, the Austrians was entirely annihilated, with only 500 making an out. 
We lost 1,700, which leave in our army with 4,000 men. Highest kills goes to Winged Hussars with 700 kills, followed by the Cavalry. But then we also had some high kills by the Cannons. And this time around, there's not a big difference in between the Cavalry and the Cannons. Uh, the big jump is in between the Winged Hussars and the rest of them. Uh, where the uh, Carabiniers get about um, 500 to 350. Winged Hussars 700, Demi Cannons about 300, and most of the infantry around 200 Grenadiers. A uh, very poor uh, result from the Grenadiers in terms of their kills, except for one of them. Not entirely sure which one of this is. 78 lost, 173 killed, but the, others, the other two did really poorly. Hopefully though, I will be getting some kind of like time to reorganize and like actually upgrade, take time to up recruit new troops and upgrade and like build the economy and so on. So I've been saying this forever, but hopefully it happens at, at some point, right? Austrian force defeated. And with that, it only really leaves one big Austrian force right here. And I'm thinking that, I mean, the well, power levels are equal. I could probably do some kind of a peace agreement. But I think I'm going to have to do like we did with the Saxons and we did with the Prussians. It's time to bring the Austrians down completely. So we'll attack. In the next episode we'll attack here and destroy that. At the same time. As we attack. And take Vienna. We'll let Vienna revolt. And it'll, Austria will come back as a one. One province state. And then we'll uh, have them there. While we go ahead and deal with the Ottomans. And the Swedes. Um, Swedes need to be dealt with. Not because I'm, you know, super, Livonia is super important. But I don't want the Russians to take it. That's my biggest concern. I don't care really about the Swedes. I don't care about the province. I care about the Russians not having it. I don't want the Russians to have it. Otherwise, as I've said, I want to get into this weak, this weak muck right here. That's what I call the Balkans. Weak muck. Look at it. Re rebel areas. Nothing here. More rebel areas. Could just go th straight through all of it. Um, but that will be for the next episode. In between... I might even lay siege to Prague and sweat them a little bit. And I might have taken Vienna as well in between turns. And I might have smited some Ottomans, leaving the uh, road open to further conquest. But uh, who knows? You know, might be time for the Russians to backstab me and we have got a whole different can of worms. But with that, I will say as I always say, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, and hopefully I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye.